Hi, this is David Stuckler from Fast Track Grad. I'm a professor at University of Bocconi, Milan, and today I want to share with you five reasons why you should always do a systematic review at the beginning of your PhD. So do you ever feel in your research a, a bit lost, a sense that maybe you don't belong, or that you got to where you are through smokes and mirrors or tricks and they're gonna find out about you? maybe kick you out of the program. Look, this is a common feeling that many graduate students have at the beginning of their journey, and it's called imposter syndrome. There's even a name for it in psychology. And the cure is to build confidence. And that's why a systematic review is so important. It's reason number one, because by doing a systematic review, you're gonna become the expert fast on a topic. You're gonna know more about it, quite possibly, than even your supervisor or professor who you're working with because you're gonna go right up to date, right up to speed, and stand on the shoulders of the giants in the field. Uh, the second major reason beyond confidence is that systematic review is fast. And all, all of what we do at Fast Track Grad is try to help you accelerate your graduate and academic careers fast. And systematic review is the fastest way for you to do a publication that will get many citations and establish yourself as an authority in your field. So we've developed a system that you can do it in as little as two months. If you want to know more about that, click on, on the link below. The third important reason uh, to do a systematic review is that it's step by step. It's down to a science that there is a process that anybody can do. Uh, I've led undergraduates through it. In fact, as an undergraduate, I published my first paper doing a systematic review fast, and that helped me get into grad school and unlock other opportunities. So step by step, anybody can do it, and I'm confident you can do it with the skills that you have now. The fourth major reason to do it is it creates a roadmap for the rest of your studies. It sets your agenda. It brings into focus what are the gaps in knowledge? What has been done, has not been done? What methods work, don't work? What tools across disciplines might have great potential but haven't been brought to bear on, on your topic? So it really helps you identify those gaps, those critical areas, those niches where you can make a big contribution fast. But also importantly, I can't tell you how many times I've had enthusiastic graduate students, mustard keen, dive into a project only to go in search and find, oh, somebody's already done this. I just wasted six months, a year going down a dead end path. And so the systematic review is also going to tell you what not to do. It's going to avoid duplicating efforts of somebody else to make sure that your contribution is high value. And the last thing that's important, and this is why I recommend it for every PhD student, graduate student, undergrad, wherever you are in your journey, is that it's going to get you in the habit of doing good science. Now, the normal way people review literature is they go click around on Google or Google Scholar. But the fundamental flaw and the reason it's not scientific is because it's not reproducible. And reproducibility is what sets us apart as scientists compared to the rest of the world. It means that when you do your search and take that step-by-step -step process I mentioned uh, and see it through, the conclusions you draw anybody else could come to if they repeat those step-by-step -step, uh, pieces of the process that, that you've taken. Uh, so it gets you in the habit of doing good, reproducible, objective, transparent science. Uh, it's a way of thinking and it's a shift that is a transformation that begins inside of you and this is the right place to start. Uh, again, for more tips and tricks on how to speed up your journey uh, in your academic and graduate career, uh, follow the links below and thanks for watching.